The setback is a setup for you to win. So I don't even know why you're over there in the state that you're in as is as if all hope is gone because that is far from the case. God gave you a promise and trust me, every word that proceeded out of God's mouth, it will do what it is supposed to do. It shall prosper. It will. It won't return back unto God void. So every promise that God has spoken in you, through you and for you, it shall indeed come to pass. So any set setback that you experience, just thank God in advance because this setback is setting you up to it, to win. In other words, to receive all the promises of God, right? Don't believe me? Go to Genesis 37. Y'all remember what happened with Joseph? He had some jealous brothers. God showed Joseph that he was going to be in high in stature and they were going to have to, wear, in other words, not worship him, but they were going to have to bow down to him. He was going to be their rulers and they didn't like that because they were already jealous of him. And so they came up with a plot, with a scheme and they did what? They sold him into slavery and told their father that he had been eaten up by a beast or shredded by a beast, right? And so they sold Joseph into slavery. And then what happened? Potiphar, he bought him and he saw how well Joseph were with his hands. And he said, you know what? I, I like what I see. You are a good worker. So I'm gonna make you overseer over my house. And so Joseph was happy. But what happened? Potiphar's wife was a perverted thing. She wanted Joseph to lie with her, to sleep with her, to commit adultery. And Joseph said, no, your husband, my master, has brought me into your home and he's given me everything. But you, I will not commit this sin with you. And she tempted him once. And then she tempted him again. And I know Joseph knew this lady was thirsty. Oh, she was thirsty. It was drought in her mouth. It was drought in her flesh. And she wanted to be water. Yes, she did. And Joseph said no. And Joseph got out of there so fast. She grabbed Joseph's garment and he left so fast that his garment stayed in her hands. And so what she did, she told the guards and her husband that went, hey, listen, this man is trying to mock us. He tried to come in here and hit on me to have what relations with me, to commit adultery with me. And guess what her husband Potiphar did? He put Joseph in prison. Joseph was innocent. This is still a part of the setback, y'all. But listen, Joseph was put in a prison with Bill Cosby and Martha Stewart. Listen to me carefully. No, no, no. I'm not saying that Bill Cosby and Martha Stewart was guilty. I'm just saying y'all know what happened to him, okay? But listen, there was some high echelons in prison. And the and the um and Potiphar put Joseph in a prison where the king sent the ones that he sent us. Which means what these were no, these were no regular old criminals off the street. These were wealthy criminals. You listening to me? Like I say, he was in there with Bill Cosby and with uh, uh, Martha Stewart. He was. And so he was set up to be in that place. Did you hear me? That was a set up for him to be in that place. He got set back by being sold by his brothers and being into Potiphar's house and his wife laying false accusations on him. That's all the setback. But then he got set up by being put in prison. He did. Because he got in there with some, with some high-minded people that come from some high places. And so what ended up happening? It was two, a baker and a butler. And they both had dreams. You have to remember that God blessed Joseph to be a dream interpreter. That was his gift. That was his gift. God gave him the interpretations of dreams. And so one day Joseph saw the butler, butler and the baker and they had this confused look on their face. Their countenance was off. And Joseph said, what's with the sad, sorrowful faces? And they both said, we had a dream, but we can't interpret it. There's no one here to interpret. And what did Joseph say? Joseph said, well, God knows it all. God knows all things. So tell me the dream. In other words, tell me God gave me the gift and he will give me the interpretation. And sure enough, the butler tells his dream and the baker tells his dream. The baker said he saw three baskets on his head. 
And there were birds feasting off the bread and the meat on top of his head. And Joseph told him, okay, three baskets, three days, in three days, you're going to die, bro. And the birds going to be in your flesh. Then the butler tells him his dream. He said, I saw me. I saw three branches in a vine and I had grapes and I was squeezing grapes in a cup, right? In a goblet. And then I handed the cup to the king. And then what did Joseph tell him? He said, I see your position being restored back into the king. And this is what Joseph told the butler. He said, listen. When you get restored back into your position in the king's presence, in his kingdom, remember me, brother. Remember me. Remember me. Tell the king about me. And sure enough, the interpretation that God gave Joseph was on point, accurate. And everything that he had told the butler and the baker, it all came to pass just as it was spoken, just as it was interpreted. But guess what? The butler forgot about Joseph. And I know Joseph was like, man, the butler ain't said nothing to the king about me yet. I'm still rotting here in jail. I'm still in this captivity. But you have to remember, just as Joseph had to remember, that when your time come, God would allow you to become recommended. See, your gift, as God says, will make room for you. The thing is, the reason why you haven't seen any action yet is because the room has not yet been made. There has not come a need for your gift yet. Do you hear me? Yet. See, while the butler was there, the king Pharaoh didn't have any dreams that he was puzzled about. He did. He had no dreams that he would want me to know and nobody could answer. That had not happened. But just as soon, listen carefully, just as soon as Pharaoh had that dream and he had it twice the first dream he had was about what about some about some cattle it was some sick cattle it was some, i'm sorry some fat cattle calf like cows and whatnot they were big and fluffy and big and, and healthy and then he saw emerge some skinny ones look real sick and foul and, and, and ill will right and he said those skinny ones ate up the fat then god gave him another dream about some ears of corn and the corn was full right it was good right but then it sprouted up some unhealthy corn some some scarce corn right and that corn ate up the good corn and what happened and he couldn't figure that thing out he called his soothsayers he was smudging his sage. He was rubbing on crystals right <laughs> he was calling everybody but God right he couldn't figure the dream out couldn't get answers, which means what? There was a need. There was a need to have a dream interpreted. And who has the gift to interpret dreams? Joseph, which means what? Now his gift is making room for him, which means what? Now recommendation is in order. So the butler heard about how the king could not get his dream interpreted no matter who he called on, no matter how many magicians he called on. No matter how many soothsayers say he called on, the king could not get it interpreted. So the butler heard about it. And he said, wait a minute. When I was in prison, there was a young man who interpreted my dream. And it was for word for word. And it did come to pass just the way he interpreted. And what happened? The king called Joseph. Y'all remember the rest of the story. Do y'all want me to finish telling? I'll tell it because it's so good. The king heard about it, so the king requested to have Joseph to come to him. That's his gift making room for him. His gift making room for him. And what did they do? They went and got Joseph, but they did not bring him to the king or any kind of way. They shaved him. They shaved him. I know he was looking rough and smelling a certain kind of way. His clothes were probably tattered, right? What he had on was not worthy to be presented before the king. So his arraignment, his raiment had to be changed. The way he presented himself had to be changed. I told y'all the other day, sometimes, well, not sometimes, all the time before God changes your situation, he changes your name. There has to be a difference about you. That's why God says, when any man be in Christ, he is a new Creature, old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Which means what? When you get in Christ, when you're in his will, when you're in his plan, newness is there. You can't go before God the same way you were before you met him. Before you surrendered to him. Everything has to be new. 
And just like Abram, how God changed his name and then they had the baby, it's the same way here with Joseph. His raiment was changed. He was shaven, right? That beard that had grown so long, he got he got that all lined up and all cleaned up. His hair that was all wild and stuff, he got that trim and got that shaved up. He did. He wasn't looking any kind of way to be presented before his destiny. Did you hear me? He wasn't looking any kind of way before he was presented before his destiny. Which means how you look today determines how fast you get to your destiny. How your countenance is today. It's not just talking about your clothing. If you are over there having a pity party, you ain't ready to see the king. You're not ready for your gift to be used. Because you're about to be recommended. Your name is in somebody's mouth right now. There's a need for your gift. There's a need for that that God has placed in you. There's a need and God would have never put it in you if it was not going to be a need for it. So ain't no need of you over there acting sad, looking sad. Thinking that God hadn't heard you. Thinking that the mantle that's on your life. Thinking that the gift that God has put in you. Thinking that the, 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 all the things that God has promised you was all naught. The devil is a lie. God said his word won't return back into him void. Which means it was, it's going to go out and do and perform what God called it to do. And guess what? It ain't just going to do it. It's going to be prosperous in that thing. God said he's not a man that he should lie. He ain't going to lie about nothing. Everything that comes out of his mouth feeds you. And there's no waste to it. So you got to get yourself together. You got to get your raiment together. Your righteousness, your holiness together, your countenance together. In other words, your thoughts, your mind. God said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, right? Exactly. Go to Philippians like God, where God tells you how to think. Because if you're thinking the right way, which is the right way of how God thoughts are towards you, what did God say? I know the thoughts I think towards you. They are not, they are of peace and not of evil. Because God said, what? He has given you a plan to do what? Prosper you and to give you an expected end. Exactly. But you got to be presented well. Which means what? You got to look the part, boo. You got to shave yourself, right? You got to have the right tongue. You can't have the serpent's tongue, the, the tongue of division, speaking contrary, of, contrary to what God's word say. You got to speak with the, the tongue of the sword, which is God's truth, his word. When you speak God's word, your countenance will change. And guess what? The need that is in the earth for your gift, for your mantle, for the mantle and the gift that God's placed on you, guess what? It shall and it will make room for you. Therefore what? The setback. Is actually a setback, a set up to get you to win. Did you hear me? The setback is actually a set up to get you to win. Are you listening to me? And this is one thing you should remember also. Don't be upset. Don't have a certain grudge. Don't be in a space of unforgiveness because of those who were involved with the setback. Did you hear me? Ain't no need of you having, being upset with people that was involved with the setback. Why? Because it's all a part of, God, all a part of God's plan. What did God say? Everything works together for what? The good of those that love him. Every single thing. The setback is a setup to get you to win. It's putting you in position. So if you're over there in a state of forgiveness because somebody set you back. Because somebody was involved with stabbing you in the back. Because someone was involved, involved with getting you fired. Because someone was, was involved with your marriage falling apart. Because somebody was in the, involved. You get what I'm saying? Ain't no need of you holding grudges. God said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against what? Principality. And the weapons of our warfare are what? Are not carnal. But they are mighty through who? Through God. To the pulling down of every stronghold. Right? Casting down the imaginations. Right? Exactly. And every high thing that will exalt itself against the word or knowledge of God. So listen, ain't, you ain't got no time to be trying to be upset with people because they were involved with the setback. You just got to remember that the setback is a set up to get you to win. Just like with Joseph. I told y'all he was placed into prison with Martha Stewart and with Bill Cosby. And when they got out, they remember you when the need came. You haven't been forgotten. God will place you in places that you don't understand. You'll say, why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I here? I don't know why I'm here. And then later on down the line, when God has worked that thing out, when he has brought you into winning states, right? 
then you'll say, oh, I remember being over here when I was in the set back. And then you realize, oh, okay, now I get it. It's all come together like a puzzle. I see the bigger picture. So listen, trust God. Don't be looking over there moping. Don't be looking like you got a God that will not deliver you. Because you do. God shall deliver you. He said his knowledge will deliver you. His knowledge is his word. It is. So trust God with all of your heart, as he said, and lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. You'll see he'll direct your paths. Not paths, but paths with S's. With the S on the end. He'll order your step. And every step that God's ordering, guess what? It's good because God said the steps of a good man is ordered by him. He's not going to lead you wrong. And if by chance you think you're going to slip, just ask God to enlarge your step like he said he would. He said he'll enlarge your steps so that your feet will not what slip. He got your back. Never forsaking you and never leaving you. Never, fulfill, never failing you. You understand that? So listen, the setback that you're in, listen, it does not compare to what you're about to experience. I told you Joseph had control over all of Egypt. He was set up to win because of the setback. And it was all according to God's plan from the get-go. So listen, be encouraged today. God is going to make you ruler over a whole lot. Don't pay attention to that setback. Instead, glorify God and thank God right now for what's to come. And that is your purpose. That is God's plan and will for your life. Because God says what? It is he that worketh in us to will and to do for his good pleasure. And when God is pleased, you better believe that you are satisfied. You better believe that you are not in the space of lack when God is pleased. So thank God right now. Glorify him because the best is at your door. It is. It's a setback to set you up to win. I hope y'all got it. But if you didn't get it, rewind and say, God, I talked a whole lot, a whole lot. But if you didn't get the same, rewind and watch again. But in the meantime, between time, if you take just a little bit of what I'm telling you and apply to your life to the best of your ability, you won't ever, 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 ever have the magical smile. Why? Because your smiles will always be genuine. Be blessed, stay blessed. Be blessed, stay blessed. Y'all know what's coming next. Ciao.